Hi, I'm Daryl. I'm back at Lyme Regis Museum and today we're in the Mary Anning Wing having a look at some amazing fossils. We're going to do some artwork that's based on a particular type of fossil. It's a Dimorphodon, which is a type of pterosaur. And you can see one of the examples of this fossil in the cabinet just behind me here. Here's another example of the same skeleton. This time, there's more of the fossil exposed, but the bones are jumbled up. We're going to do some artwork that is like a jigsaw where those bones get put back together. So having looked at the fossil actually in the gallery, we're going to have a go at doing some artwork based on it. So I've got some reference material of what the skeleton actually looks like. And we're going to start off with quite an unusual shape. I'm going to draw something that looks a little bit like a pair of glasses. So I'm going to draw an oval shape in the centre. That's going to be the rib cage of the animal. And then over to one side, I'm going to draw another similar shape, about the same size, and just like a pair of glasses, I'm going to join them together. First of all, we're going to start off with the spine, and the spine will be running across the top of this shape here. So I've got some cardboard, just some thin card, that I'm going to bend into a little tube shape. It doesn't have to be too neat, so I'm just going to do it like that. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to try and cut some notches across the top of it. So I'm going to chop down into the cardboard like this. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to turn it to an angle and I'm just going to chop a few pieces out. So almost like triangle shapes, like that. And then when you've done that all the way along, we can keep those for later. We're going to try and make the spine run across the top of these two shapes. So I've got a bit of tape and I'm going to stick that on. Right, once the spine's done, then we can start concentrating on these two shapes. So this one's the skull, this one's going to be the rib cage. So what I'm going to do is just take out a piece of card it's about the same size as what we've drawn on the paper. I'm going to chop that out roughly, it doesn't have to be too neat at this stage. So we've got a shape that fits, and then I want this to look like ribs. So I'm going to chop them and try and take some sort of triangle shapes out. So I'm going one way and then the other. Okay. You can see that shape there, and then I'm just going to bend those over my fingers and we're going to attach that rib cage on. So we need to do a skull shape, which is the fossil that we were looking at in the cabinet. So I've got some reference material. I'm going to use another piece of cardboard with an oval shape that's about the same size as the first one and then I'm going to cut the shapes out. Now, both these shapes need to be a little bit three-dimensional. So with the bottom jaw, I'm just going to bend it slightly into more of a little banana shape. And with this top jaw, we're going to pull this together and use a bit of tape so that it becomes a little bit more three-dimensional. So the skull shapes are now taped into place. You can, if you want to, use a pencil to just push the tape in if you can't get your fingers into all the little spaces. And before we do all the legs and the tail and the wings, we're going to also make a couple of little bones. There's a bone that's sort of the shoulder bone, and there's also a pelvic bone here, which I can see in the reference material. So I'm just going to sketch those in. 
And instead of using any different materials, I'm just going to do this by using the tape itself. So I'm going to get some tape, I'm going to scrunch it all back on itself so it's nice and sticky, push it into place, and we'll make those two bones very simply by using that as the material. Next we need to decide where the leg bones and the wings and the tail are going to go. So again, using a little bit of the reference material from the skeleton, I'm going to sketch these in, but only as simple outlines. So a bit like a zigzag. So the bones can be made from lots of different materials, whatever you've got handy. So here I've got a selection of things you can use. We've got some spaghetti. We've got some matches that I've broken the heads off. We've got some straws, paper straws, or even just strips of the original cardboard that we've used. Or you could even roll up some tape. So grab a piece of tape, twist it in your fingers, give it a roll in your hands, and that's ready to use. Now I'm going to lay these bones into position. With each of the legs uh, completed, we can start to build up the tail and also the wings. So with the tail, I'm going to put a bit of glue here and we're going to do it in individual pieces, a bit like vertebra. So take something you can chop up. So I'm going to chop this straw up. You could also do the same with some of the tape or some of the cardboard into little pieces and then arrange those so that they look like bones. You'll have noticed when we've built the bones on the legs here, um, we're missing a little toe from the front of these feet here. And that's because this actually is what the wings are made out of. So this bone has grown longer and that's what the wings are attached to. We're going to put some glue on and we're going to try and build the wing shapes using some of the leftover pieces we've got here. So I'm going to use a few of the matchsticks, some of the leftover straws and a little bit of the leftover spaghetti. So I'm going to use some of the leftovers that we've got now. So a little bit of this cardboard that we used for the background. I'm going to tear some of these pieces off the surface and I'm going to use them to hide some of the masking tape that I don't want to show up. So 
So remember earlier we've got all of these scraps that we cut off when we were building the first few stages and we're going to use some of these up to make the claws and also to make some teeth. Last but not least, we're going to put a stain over the whole of the piece of artwork. So I've mixed up some really strong black coffee and I'm going to paint it across the whole surface. And here's the finished piece. All I've done is trimmed it around the edges. It needs to dry a little bit and then it'll be ready for display. Mm -hmm. 